Ryan is going to talk about his coffee company who has a surprising and kind strategy to offer. <laughs> okay. Hi everyone. Um, so I want to save the world. Um, does everybody else here want to save the world? Because we kind of see it's a little bit bad right now. Yeah? Raise your hands if you do. Fantastic. But how do you do it? So a few years ago, I set up an art gallery in Tokyo. And uh, we take 20% of artists. It's a small percentage, but galleries take 50%. But that's not going to help me change the world. So then I set up a brand strategy company, because I needed that to help me do other things, like logos, graphic design, and other things, so I could do other projects. Then it brings me around to something to create something called a cash cow. Now, a cash cow is a company that's so big that I can use all the money to change the world. And there's only two real products or commodities that I can really use for that. One's oil, and I don't want to touch that. And the second one is coffee. Now, coffee is the second highest traded commodity in the world. It's huge. It employs more farmers than most other things, and is normally in the third world countries. So. By helping those people, it really helps their lives. But how do I make something that creates a massive amount of money? And we're talking like 30, 40 billion. Starbucks is a $16 billion company, and it gives less than 1% to good causes. It's tiny. Let's get for these 11 billion. <laughs> this is Robin, he's in the pool. When it all happened, I sent my CEO from the family, he's the CEO. I sent him over to Nepal to help out with disaster relief on day three. Then I sent over a Land Rover to help out on day five, and we're helping out before we've even launched as a company. So I kind of put my money where my mouth is, where most people don't. I don't have a huge amount of money, but I know that my resources can help out these situations. Now, there's four main areas that need to be changed. One's education, one's disaster relief and prevention, conservation, and microfinance. Now, you can send money over to Nepal to help out. It's great, it's wonderful. But that economy is going to be devastated for seven years. Now, the media goes away, your interest goes away. Not your heart, but something else happens, like the most recent typhoon in North Japan. Floods, but it's a developed country, they have money. Another one in the Philippines. Now, they only just had another disaster a little while ago. Now, there's more people asking for your money. Now, does anybody here donate money to good causes? Raise your hands, please. Pretty good. How many people want to give money to good causes if they can, if they have the financial resources? Okay, a few more. Now what about if I said to you, you can help out all of these causes that you want to support without having to spend any more money? Would you all agree that would be kind of good to do? Yeah? Yes. yeah? Great, perfect. So that's why I've set up the coffee company. With the coffee company, all you've got to do is buy coffee, which you do anyway. If it's as good or if it's better than another coffee that you like, buy this coffee because 70% of it will go back to good causes. 70%. I don't know anything about disaster relief. I know enough about conservation, but I don't know how to implement it. I don't know anything about microfinance, and I know very little about the other areas that we'll be supporting, but that's why I bring in experts to do it. One of them is a guy called Peter Winham. He's the foremost expert on the shrinking Arctic shelf. Have you, has anybody here seen a documentary called The Cove? Dolphins being murdered, yeah? Okay, so Richard O'Barry, he's on my board of advisors because I know nothing about dolphin conservation. I know nothing about microfinance, so we're getting somebody else for that. But Robin used to be the head of a disaster relief organization. Hence, he's the CEO of the company because he can go in and he knows, about, and he knows everything in that area, and that's what I'm doing. Now I have massive issues with the stock markets because it's gambling, and the stock markets or stock brokers are the definition of parasites. I don't know if you actually know the definition of parasite, but that's what they are. And I'm not making up, it's something that benefits from other things around them doing the work, and they do half of the work, if not less. A stock broker might make two million, three million dollars in a day, doesn't do anything. I have massive issues with companies being overfinanced or overvalued, like Instagram. Now, it employed 10 people, it made billions of dollars, and yet there's a company that makes maybe 200 million, it employs 3,000 people, that's worth less than Instagram. No, it's not. I am not a communist in any way. I'm a social capitalist, and specifically about culture, and I think culture can change the world. 
I lecture about this stuff in Beijing. I've done it in Bangkok. I've done it in future city planning. I used to head an international architecture firm. And it kind of bored me, to be honest with you. Um, did a lot of projects, but uh, it wasn't as green as I wanted. So I left, and I'm doing coffee. All the other stuff I do supports what I'm doing. And what I'm saying today is very simple. Business is broken. It doesn't work as it is. Everybody's in debt. Every country's in debt, apart from enterprise, a major country, Singapore isn't in debt really, it's external debts. Um, and Luxembourg is the fourth or fifth most indebted country in the world, and it's this big. It's got more debt than China, because no matter what these governments say, no matter what anybody says about capitalism, it doesn't work. It doesn't work in any way. People want healthcare, people want education, and they can have it. They can have it easily. You can look at Scandinavian countries. They manage to do it pretty well. Never hear about them in the press. Never hear about massive protests or projects or things going with a ride because they're quiet. You're at America. America, the most indebted country in the world. It uses war to get out of problems, pretty much. Sorry about that to any Americans, but that's kind of what your model is. Um, Britain's not really any better. We are the most indebted country per capita in the world. We have one seventh of the population of America, and we have half the debt of America, which sickens me. But here's the big problem with that. Most people blame it on military spending. It's not for the UK, it's on social security. I'm not a huge believer in this. I believe people should work. I believe they should have a safety net. And I believe that, well, if you look at this, this is my last slide, so I'm ready to wrap it up. Now that's how much we give to good causes. That's how much the Fortune 500 companies in the world give to good causes. Now if, we, if the Fortune 500 companies in America alone adopted our business model, you could finance over 300 United Nations and over 100, no, 300 <coughs> Save the Children organizations or 150 United Nations. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Do something better with business.